okay, there's something kind of strange going on. And so I had to pray about it. And what I was praying about is why is it that there's so many people and the devil has such a stronghold with this teaching that the rapture happens first? In other words, we're all taken out before any, before the mark of the beast, before any trials come. Why is the devil pushing that? Why is that lie so prevalent? And I was praying, I was asking God and the Lord, you know what the Lord told me? Out of nowhere, the Lord spoke to me and he said, the wise and the foolish builder. That's what he said. And he showed me how the wise builder, now if you remember this parable, it's like, uh, I think it's in Matthew, uh, it's in uh, Matthew 7, Matthew 7, uh, 23 to 25, and it's also in Luke 6, 46. And there's two people. One is the wise builder who dug down to the rock and built his house on the rock. And the other is the one who just started building right on the sand. And uh, now here's the thing. When the storm comes... The guy who built on the sand is completely unprepared for that storm and everything washes away suddenly. Meanwhile, the guy who's built on the rock, his house is steadfast. Now the difference is, one has laid up treasure in heaven where that storm can't even get to it. The other has built that house right here on this earth and so for example let's say you got a disobedient christian who spent the last 20 years he's a multi-millionaire he has homes he has buildings he has businesses but he's never really obeyed god when the mark of the beast comes out either he's going to keep everything and take the mark of the beast or he's going to lose everything Meanwhile, the wise builder has his inheritance in heaven. But here's what the Lord's been showing me. And the reason that there's so many people who are thinking that the rapture is going to happen like right away. And they're not even preparing. They're not even praying. They're like, ah, oh, the mark of the beast is no big deal. I'm going to be raptured out before that ever happens. I'm good. <laughs> well... What's going to happen when they don't get that rapture that they're hoping for? What's going to happen when really the reality is, oh my goodness, all hell breaks loose. Meanwhile, those who believe and know that, no, I know the Lord. I want to go through my trials so that I can attain to a greater resurrection. That's what I'm all about. I'm like, dude, why would I want to be raptured up and get to heaven and be like a little minuscule like worm in heaven? Meanwhile, the Apostle Paul, he was shipwrecked. He was beaten and left for dead. He lived in prison. He went through trials and hardships. And at the end of it, he was put to death for his faith. And I think some Christians somehow think that when they get to heaven, they're going to be like high-fiving the Apostle Paul like they're even going to be on his level or something. Well, how can you attain to that level? And listen, we're talking about an eternal inheritance that will not fade. It will not perish. It doesn't pass away. It doesn't rust. It doesn't get burned up in a fire. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't die. It doesn't age. Like our physical bodies age. You can buy a brand new Mercedes Benz and I guarantee you there's a bunch of brand new Mercedes Benz that were purchased in the 60s and are gone from the face of the earth. Has long been smelted down. Brand new back in the day. There's probably a brand spanking new Ferrari that was totaled in 1995, but at one point it was brand new, and now where is it? Point is, 
The things of this world fade, perish, and disappear. But God promises an, inter an eternal inheritance that never fades, never rusts, never goes away. I don't understand why these Christians want to be raptured up before they get a chance to attain to a greater resurrection as described in Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says in chapter 11 of Hebrews that some were cut in half. Some were, were, were chose to stay in prison. Apostle Paul, you know, Paul at one point, he appealed to Caesar and they told him, listen, Paul, if you don't appeal to Caesar, this matter that you're talking about is no big deal. We could let you go. And Paul said, no, the Lord told me to appeal to Caesar. I'm staying in chains and uh, you got to send me to Rome. And so Paul chose by his own obedience to God in order to gain, gain a greater resurrection to stay in jail and to appeal and to Caesar. So when the mark of the beast comes out, consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials of many kinds. These trials come that your faith might be proven genuine. So all these lukewarm Christians are like, I don't want a greater resurrection. I just want to get raptured out so I don't have to go through any trials. Oh, I want my martyr's crown. I'm sorry. Uh, I nullify whatever you want by the power of the Holy Ghost, and I happen to have more authority than you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> How's that? Now I just prayed. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, this rapture will not happen except for exactly as described in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 down to chap verse 20. The, listen, the gospel goes out to all the world. Then Babylon the Great falls. Then the mark of the beast comes out. Babylon the Great has not fallen yet. The mark of the beast has not come out yet. After that, God, the Bible says this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. After that, God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And things are so crazy that the Bible says that, there is, that, that, that the trials are such as never has been seen ever before in the history of the world and never to ever be before again. And if those days had not been cut short, then the Lord says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. That's that time. Listen, when the Lord says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, he's talking about the time in Matthew 24, verse 22, where the trials are so bad and so terrible that no time in history has it ever been that bad and no time will it ever be that bad ever again. And he says, if those days had not been cut short, then the Lord, then the rapture happens. And what cuts those days short? It's the rapture that cuts the days short. When you read Matthew chapter 24, verse 22, what is it that cuts the days short? The rapture. So in Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 14, what is it? that happens right after God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. The rapture. I'm sorry, but I want my martyr's crown. And I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be some trials. I know it's going to be a difficult time. And I know it's going to require the power of God and the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Lord. And it's going to require seeking God. And it's going to require fasting and prayer. Guess what? Good news not going to be able to buy and sell, so you're not going to be able to eat too much food. You're going to have plenty of time to fast and pray. Aren't you glad? I'm glad. I'm looking forward to that time. I've had times where God had me fasting for extended periods of time, and I know that if you wait on the Lord, He will renew your strength and you will rise up. I've been there. I've done that. I've had times where God told me, walk away from everything you have. Just walk away. And it wasn't fun, it wasn't easy, but once I got away from it, it was joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm telling you right now, for those who are faithful to the Lord, when the mark of the beast comes out and all this tri trials that we see talked about in the Bible, honestly, it's going to be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, you might be fasting in the midst of that. You might be in 
prison in the midst of that. But the Apostle Paul was fasting, and he was in prison, and he was put to death for his faith. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me, right? Oh, but I want the rapture to happen before any of that, because I don't want no martyr's crown. I definitely don't even care about having an inheritance in heaven or anything like that. My whole life, I've never even done anything for God. But after all, saved by grace and grace alone, I don't have to do nothing. It's not by works. Yeah, that's the exact mindset. That's the whole reason when the mark of the beast comes out, the Bible says they will quickly fall away, because they have no inheritance in heaven. They've never been obedient to God. And they've basically, any time the Lord has spoken to them, he who has an ear to hear, if the Lord ever did speak to them, they rejected the voice of the Lord and, and chose not to obey. And these are the same people who are saying, I believe in God, the rapture's going to happen before the market beast comes out. Yeah, it's going to happen for sure. I know for sure. Oh yeah, I know for sure. And then like, <laughs> what, what, and then the mark of the beast comes out. But I thought you were going to be, I thought I was supposed to be raptured. And then they're going to get angry at God, take the mark of the beast, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to turn in everybody they know who's faithful to the Lord, and they're going to be just like Judas Iscariot, and the Bible says brother will betray brother even unto death, and these people, they will have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints, and the Bible says... That's what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, you know, you've never seen more hate than when the counterfeit is faced with the genuine. And the counterfeit realizes, I'm the counterfeit? And they look and they see the genuine and they go, That's why these guys who, uh, well, in one of my other videos, I'm talking about these guys who constantly, like, coming after me. Your teaching is wrong, and you're a false teacher, and you're not hearing from God, and you need to test the spirits. And then the minute I said, okay, how about I test you? This guy still won't type back to me, Jesus is Lord. I've asked him a dozen times, okay, here's your test, so that I know you're sent from God. Just type back to me a message, Jesus is Lord. He won't do it. Neither, there's two of them. One of them is the guy called the rapture comes. The rapture comes, all one word. And the other is some like 7333 three, three, doodly do something or other. I can't remember his name. But these guys been attacking me and attacking me. And it's because I'm the real thing, man. And I'm not saying that to boast, but they're counterfeits and they can't stand it. <laughs> and I bet you they thought, oh, that's no problem. I'll just write to you, Jesus is Lord. And then their hands wouldn't work. And they're like, hey, why can't I do it? Because you're filled with the devil and the devil won't let you. <laughs> And the Lord won't let you either because he's trying to show you that you are of the devil. <laughs> That's why they never typed back to me, Jesus is Lord. And I sent them over and over, just tell me Jesus is the Lord. And I proclaim right now, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>